This video is sponsored by Squarespace and this tornado is made with math notes. This tornado is just a volume shader with some, you know, notes and stuff on a cube and this actually looks like a tornado. The first thing we need is a cube and Blender handily provides us with a very legendary cube in the start. Let's add the shaders, a new shader editor, bam. And then what we need is a principal volume shader. So let's add a volume shader principled a volume not the scatter but the principled volume and put it to the volume of the thing not the surface because this is not going to have any uh, results this way we have this thing here and you see it is very 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 faint i mean this doesn't look at all like a nice and strong volume cube we need a couple of things to fix this now the first thing that we need is to add some light so let's add a sun lamp with the strength of four around 10 and then we have this thing here and now we have this cube uh, looking a lot more bright but the problem is that the cube doesn't have any volumetric shadows and it's also very i mean you see those little like slices that you know when i move this camera and all that that's because ev is calculating uh, volumes using the way like that you know so here we have the start and the end now the end means that after this distance there are not going to be any slices and this here is the number of those slices. So uh, you're going to decrease this until the cube is intact, it's very visible, very correct. And also the start, you're going to increase this until you don't need any more. And now we have squeezed all of those uh, slices together into this really 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 uh, tiny portion of our 3D world and also the volumetric shadows enable those and it's looking pretty pretty good. Let's start with the tornado. So the first thing that we need is a or actually the last thing that comes out is like a swirly this shape as you see here right this one here. I mean if you just give something like that it's very hard to do. Let's make just a shape like that and make this even simpler let's make just a cylinder and to make this even more simpler let's just make a sphere at the start out of volume for that we need texture coordinates because every procedural material starts with texture coordinates like that if you're using a mac you have to use a geometry node and use the position uh, from here if you're using windows we're going to use the object from here uh, you take this uh, you know object coordinates they look like that we are going to calculate the length of those uh, vectors from the center of the object so uh, this should create a sphere because you know when you have um, the center point of the object you're going to isolate all the vectors that have the length of let's say 0 0.3 then you're going to have exactly the same length uh, vectors from the center and this gives you pretty much a sphere so let's use a vector math and uh, a length and let's see how this looks well we don't see too much we can visualize this a bit more by using a color ramp and with the color ramp i mean uh, we can connect this to the density of the principal volume and then preview the principal volume and we don't see too much but we just have to play with the sliders and you see in the center here we have a sphere so the next thing that we need to make is a uh, cylinder the cylinder is actually pretty easy you just need a vector math uh, before the length and you're going to use a multiply and now everything has disappeared the sphere has disappeared because we have multiplied everything with zero so there is no information to calculate the length from but uh, let's enable for example only the z-axis what do you think would happen well we only have the z-axis so we have only a slice on the z-axis let's actually enable just the x-axis and the y-axis and we have a cylinder uh, if you want to i mean see this in a bit more detailed way then you need to go to this uh, tile size under volumetrics here and make this smaller so for example if i enable like two pixels here i'm gonna have a lot more uh, resolution it depends on your computer like if you have a Wii computer you're gonna use like a larger tile size and i mean you will work this out and we have completed the step two it's going pretty fast right because it's not a complicated thing actually and now we have to convert this into a cone shape and then easily into a tornado but first let's talk about our sponsor is this squarespace yes and how is this useful for artists well you can build websites and stores without the need to know how to code and squarespace also has a lot of options to build your portfolio and 
And how is this useful for artists? Do you post your art on Instagram? Yes. That means people are never gonna see your best work because they are way too lazy to scroll down there. And how do I know you're not lying? I think this would be bad and absolutely not normal if I did this to myself, right? You say I will get more potential clients with my portfolio on my website, right? Correct. People will never find my website. There are way too many out there. They will. Prove it. Squarespace has very good SEO tools. SEO is also important in YouTube. For example, this video here is SEO optimized and this one here is not search engine yeah, optimized. This one was like an absolute fail. I do remember this. You were crying like some guy. Yeah, it still hurts. Okay, so Squarespace gives me an effective way to showcase my work and make sure people find this, right? Correct. So you also gave me like a coupon code or something like that. 2% off. This must be a joke. Yeah, it was. Go to squarespace.com to start your free trial. And once you're ready to launch your website, you go to to squarespace.com slash bad normals to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain and that's it. But I guess that's fair and square. Absolutely. Okay the next step is this cone here. It's almost as easy as making a website with Squarespace. So um, we need a smaller value down here because it's small and a larger value up here because it's big up there. So how do we do this? We need to multiply with something that is small here and big here and this is my dear uh, viewers or visitors friends, subscribers, uh, this is a separate XYZ node that we need here. So object to separate XYZ and just check the Z gradient and this is small down here and large up here. I'm gonna make this actually a bit larger so you can see those nodes better. If you multiply this uh, separate XYZ Z gradient like that, well this is gonna be a problem because uh, the Z gradient is also having some negative values inside of it. So it's getting like basically infinitely bigger. So if I make this like large, you know, this is creating something like that. This isn't very nice. So let's make this uh, smaller again and let's fix this gradient. This is uh, currently minus um, one here. Let's measure if this is minus one. Take the ruler and this is yeah, minus one and up there also plus one. Let's take a map range and let's map this from what? From uh, minus uh, one to uh, and from maximum one to minimum zero and maximum one. And this looks like that pretty much like a perfect gradient for us. So let's multiply with this one. And now let's use the principal volume. Let's see what has happened. Nothing too great here. So let's invert this because it seems to be working better that way. And now this is a tornado and also a very bad tornado. So uh, let's make sure that we actually, I mean, tweak those values and see what works. So, okay, these values seem to be working pretty okay. Okay, right, this is a tornado. Look at those values, this is what I used here. We have this shape, looks pretty okay, uh, except it's very faint. Uh, so let's add some more density. How do we add this? Well, with the multiplication node, of course. So let's use the multiplication node, 40 maybe. And here we have a nice tornado. The sun is absolutely garbage, so let's use a different rotation here. Okay, this shape is now ready. Let's make this a real tornado. So. To do that, what we need is just a noise texture, actually. What we need to do is to go here, like in the beginning, where we made this um, uh, this, this length, calculated the length, and we're gonna use a mix RGB node and basically just mix a noise with uh, those things, with those vectors. So you're gonna take the noise texture and put it here. And now if you mix those, I mean, you get something really bad like that. So instead let's use the linear light blend mode and let's see what works here. 0 0.4 seems a nice number. Let's also deal with the scale. So the scale is a bit too big right now. 1.7 seems okay and let's add some roughness to it. Then let's add some detail also. So like let's add some 16 like. Oh this is too much. So let's dial back the roughness. Yeah this is looking okay. Some nice noise. And we also need to rotate this noise because it's very like uniform, very, I don't know what. And to rotate this, actually let's use the same object coordinates. This will mess up the scale. Let's, yeah, this one seems to be working better. To rotate something, we need to use a mapping node. Uh, we are gonna rotate on the Z axis. So you see the tornado is rotating, but it isn't rotating the way we want it to rotate. We want this to rotate like um, zero down here, or not, not zero, this can be any number down here. And then it's gonna just has to, Oh, what English is this? Then it just to have to be. Then it just has to be rotated. Wow, 
this is English. So it just has to be rotated like increasingly more and more and more. To do that, we need a gradient that is increasingly more and more and more and more, which is of course our lovely separate X, Y, Z, Z. Let's use this as the input. No, of course, we're not gonna use this as the input. We only want to rotate on the Z axis. So what we need is also a combine X, Y, Z. Yes, we need to combine X, Y, Z and input this into the rotation. Just a quick look into the notes so that you're not missing anything. You can follow along easily. This looks like that. Very nice. And now let's go on. Right, so we need to rotate this and right now, not of course on the X axis. This is looking very bad. Uh, let's actually see how bad this looks. Uh, this looks crappy. We need instead to connect this into the Z of here. And now this looks like a tornado. Look at that. And this is, well, better but not perfect. We need to add some haze around the tornado so that, you know, when it's going like on the sea, it's gonna have some haze around this, which comes from the water splashes that have been splashed around. To add something like some haze to it, what we need is a math node in the end of the node tree, just before the density. Uh, switch this to add and then let's add some like you know 0 0.2 here for example now you see we have some haze around the tornado which is good and all but we only want to have this around the tornado and now you're thinking ah oh, it's gonna be some you know some proximity stuff here no it's not gonna be something like that it's actually gonna be just a i know i'm so boring right here but yeah we're gonna copy the tornado so all the nodes here connect the length to there this is how the nodes are looking right now. You see nothing too complex here, just a second copy beneath, below, under the original tornado. Let's let's add another map range here. Let's copy those values. And once they are in place here, we don't see anything because it hasn't been added to the original tornado. This currently should look like exactly the same thing, which is nice. But we want instead um, to have this thing a bit different. If I use like a large number down here, like 4.8, then I'm gonna have like a thing below the tornado, which is the exact same tornado, but just uh, upside down, down, down. So, um, yeah, we just have to decrease the multiplication here with, let's say, one. And now we can, you know, add some, dial in the amount of dust that we need. We can also change, like, how is how is it gonna look like with all of those numbers. It's ready, except we need some colors and we also need some animation. To do some colors here, what we need is just the noise texture that we used, you know. Let's use a color ramp and connect the noise texture color to the ramp of colors and connect the color ramp to the color. <laughs> what a lot of colors in a sentence. And uh, now we have the colors of the noise. Okay, let's make this like a water tornado like I had in the intro. So I'm gonna make them both white. I'm gonna select like this tint here, decrease the saturation to around like maybe 0.2. And let's also make sure that the other color is the same color. And now I'm gonna make the first one a lot darker. No, it was the second one. Ah, things are getting a bit out of hand. We need to make the first one darker. And now we need to increase this, have some more contrast. Now let's animate this tornado. So to animate, what do we need? What do we need? What do we need? Uh, well, that's a good question. Um, we need to animate this number here. This tornado is hovering like crazy here. We need to take this number and of course animate this. You can use a driver if you want to, for example, I mean, I'm gonna write here hash frame, frame, hash frame. And this is too fast, right? So let's multiply this with 0 0.1. If this is still too fast, probably not, but it also is very hard to see with Eevee. And it's also going in the wrong direction. It's like hammering the ground right now. So let's just multiply this with brackets uh, minus 0 0.1 looks like that, you know. It's working in the right uh, direction, but it should be a lot slower because when the tornado is small, it should be pretty fast, but when it's like massively big, then it's gonna be slower, of course. Let's put like 0.01 here. Yeah, this is better. So now the tornado is ready. But if you're rendering this in cycles, there is an important thing you have to do. This is how it looks in cycles. I'm gonna also enable like a an HDR here. Looks pretty nice. 
If you want this to look better, what you have to do is to go first to light paths and enable some volume bounces. Maybe three bounces for volume. This makes it like the light is bouncing a bit more, so it looks more realistic. It takes longer to render, but I mean, what are the nights for? So that your computer can render and render and render. After that, you need to go to volumes and there is the step rate rendering. This is at the quality level of 1 and this is at the quality level of 0.1. I think you can see like a massive difference here. If you want to know how to make an ocean like in the intro, well, this tutorial is just fantastic for this one. This is my ocean before the tutorial, this is my ocean after the tutorial. I mean, the, yeah, you can see the difference, right? The intro project file is on Patreon, but this one here is gonna be for free in the description because I really haven't made you a New Year's present. Here you go. See you next time.